Hello and welcome back to another CodePro tutorial. In today's tutorial, we are going to be learning about error and exception handling in Swift 4. We are going to learn how to create our own custom error types and how to handle the different cases where exceptions can be thrown in our Swift code. If you're a new iOS developer just getting started, make sure you check out my iOS beginners course available on Skillshare and on Udemy. If you sign up using my Skillshare link, you'll receive two months of Skillshare premium for free. And if you sign up with my Udemy link, you'll get the course for 50% off. So go ahead and check that out. And for our tutorial, let's go ahead and open up Xcode and get started. So this tutorial is all about exception and error handling in Swift. And what we want to do is create our own custom error, create a function that can throw this error and then handle it, recover the various ways we can handle it uh, from the calling side in Swift. And so to get started, what we'll do is we'll actually work in a playground because it's a little bit easier to prototype Swift ideas independent of an iOS project. So if you've never worked in a playground before, um, from Xcode, you can go to File, New, and then just select Playground. And you can just do a, a blank playground for the template, and that'll take you into something that looks like this. So what we need to do first is actually create an exception or an error. And Swift lets us create our own types um, in the form of an enum that derives from error. So we can define an enum, we can give it a name. I'm gonna call mine custom error, and it's going to derive from error, which is the, the base error class. And what we can do here is we can define a particular case. Let's say, for example, I want to have a networking error. And I can actually pass in parameters I could have a custom message, something like this, that I can define when I throw this actual error in the code. Um, I can create another kind of error, so maybe something different. Let's just say a core data save error with uh, its own message. And I could create any kind of parameters I want in here, and you'll see more when we actually execute this. So we can go on and on and on. We can define different cases that cover specific instances of things that go wrong. And this is really awesome in Swift because it allows us to know when maybe a particular type of exception occurs and lets us react accordingly in our code um, if that case happens. Or we can treat different errors differently depending on the outcome. So now that we've defined an actual exception or an error, we need to invoke some code that can throw it. And so what we can do here is create a skeleton function, if you will. And we can just call this something like some dangerous code. And we can pass in a bool, throw error, true or false. And the key here is you have to mark this as throat. Now I'm actually gonna have this return something just to prove a point. And I'll, we'll see this as we go through this tutorial a little bit more. But we, we need to indicate that this this method, this function can throw an exception and it needs to be handled by whatever calls this function. And so what I'm gonna do here is create a return message because I said it's gonna return a string. Did this make it? And we'll return that from this method here. Now, what we're gonna do to start is if throw error or the boolean that we passed in is true, then what we'll do is throw a custom error or something that we define, right? So we have two choices here. Um, we can throw these cases that we defined, maybe a core data error or maybe a networking error. So I'll start here with a networking error just for the heck of it. And a problem or a networking error was thrown. And this could be whatever you want. It's just an example of a way that you can pass a parameter in a custom error case. So we've defined a function here. We can throw our own exception. We have our custom exception defined here. Now let's start seeing the different ways we can react to this when we call this. So there's a couple of ways you can do this and, and this tutorial is in Swift 4. So obviously this can change in going into the future. Um, but one way we can react to calling this code is with a try statement. So if we try to call this, for example, let response one equals some dangerous code, and we say that it will throw the error so that it'll trigger. 
What's going to happen in this instance is it can throw something but is not marked with try. Now there's three different ways we can handle the try execution in here. The first way we're going to look at is try with a question mark. Now, and what's going to happen in this case is when we print the response one is response one, right? So we are saying that this function is going to go ahead and throw the error. And what's going to happen is when we get the response back, it's going to be nil. So if you look at my console log here, you can see that I print out the response one and it's nil. So uh, if the exception is thrown and you call try with a question mark, uh, what's going to happen is your response will be potentially nil and you'll have to handle that in a guard let check or an if let check. Now, uh, let's try that same code again, but not throwing the error and see what we get back. So in this instance, if we do a response to, And I'll just go ahead and update my log here. Set true to false on throw error, and then just copy this here. Let's run this code and see what we get back in the console log. So we got back a string. So we made it here, and you can see that the optional is, did this make it? Because that is the text that we threw back from here. Um, however, we would still need to do an if let check or a guard let check on this, and if it did throw an error, it would come back nil as evidenced by the first print statement up here. So that's method number one for calling try. Now another way, and it's a much more dangerous way, is like this. Let response three equal try with a bang. Some dangerous code that can throw an error, right? And we'll do the same thing here. We're gonna print and we're not even gonna get that far because this thing's gonna blow up and this is very unsafe, And uh, but it has its purpose, purpose. So response three is here, right? So execution was interrupted, we threw an exception, um, and then boom, runtime crash um, because we're being a little bit uh, dangerous with, with the way with that we're unwrapping or force unwrapping the response. So. When would we want to do something like this? Well, maybe there's a circumstance where the app should crash under some you know, weird edge case. Maybe we've included some resources like an image or some file local in the file system that's bundled with the application. It should never ever fail to be found. And if it does fail or throws an error, then we should crash because something is dangerously wrong with our app. Um, other than that, I could not think of a good reason to use this. It's dangerous. It will crash your code, um, especially if you do not understand that or you don't intend for it to crash um, when something goes bad. So in the example where we do throw error here to false and run that, response three will actually come back. And you'll see here that response three will not be, have, will not be wrapped in an optional here um, because it's going to be guaranteed to return back a response no matter what. It's just not going to crash. So uh, that's method number two or the second way for handling this. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave throw error false here so we can actually get through the rest of the tutorial. Now let's look at the third way, which is using a do catch block that we encapsulate the try statement inside of. So we'll go ahead and create another response for here. So let response for equals try with nothing, no bang, no question mark, some dangerous code that can throw an error set to true. And now we're going to have to wrap this in a do block with a catch block right below it, just like this. And we will put our response for, and let me spell that right, because I can't spell, um, inside there. So if we go ahead and print the response for is, just like we did before, I'll just copy this over here, just like that, and just update the variable to be response for. Um, so if we go ahead and run that, we will 
not see anything right now because we need to go ahead and, and so our, what, what happens here is our catch block gets called and by default your catch block will have a default error that it catches and if you print the localized description for that what you'll see happen here is the operation couldn't be completed blah 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 custom error because we didn't really define any properties on the error just yet so uh, that's the default um, if you don't do anything uh, this is what you'll end up catching and, and automatically now what we can do which makes this really interesting in Swift is we can start catching the different kinds of errors that we define here so since we're throwing a networking error we can catch it and we can catch it just like this so catch custom error dot networking error let me just copy what I had from here let error message as the message that comes back and so what we can do then is say print uh, received a networking error with message and then print out the actual error message we got and so in this instance because it's going to throw an exception uh, let me go ahead and see here so in the log here received a networking error with message and the error message thrown is a networking error was thrown and that's the exact message that we threw from up here now we can extend this further by catching custom error dot core data um, save error maybe another example where something else goes wrong in the code let core data error message and what we can do here is received a core data save error with message and we can print that out to the console just like we did the networking one now we have to actually throw an exception of type core data save error because we're still throwing the networking one so if we switch the type of error that we throw a core data save error with message and I'd never updated the message, so I would, what I would want to do here is a core data exception was thrown. And we'll see that that's going to come back here in the message here. So that's pretty cool. And then what we can also do is we can just have a default catch. Kind of think about this like a, a default uh, case in a switch statement. It'll just catch anything else that's just non-customized, um, non-specialized, like the specific types of exceptions we were looking for. So print caught a default error and we can just print that out like we did before like that and so in the event that we have a let me make sure that okay make sure that runs and so in the event that let's say for example uh, something else uh, maybe we introduce a third case um, case um, see what would I want to call this we networking core data um, some other error because I can't think of a better name string so in the event that we threw some other error like this well we're not listening for it here we're not trying to catch it so as long as we have the default catch block here will catch anything that is not specifically defined or that's being listened for in our catch all catch statement. So what will happen here is you can see the last thing that was printed was caught a default error. The operation couldn't be completed. And so that is the third way that you can handle errors in Swift. And it's really cool because uh, you can define your own types. You can pass parameters through those types and you have a lot of control on the calling side for how to react when maybe certain things in your application blow up or don't work the right way, well then you'll know maybe this specific instance was a networking error or maybe it was some kind of database operation or maybe something else in the background and you can customize your messaging and response patterns accordingly. And that wraps up this tutorial. If you found this tutorial helpful, go ahead and let me know. Smash that like button and consider subscribing to CodePro to stay up to date for all the latest tutorials. 
Make sure to follow Code Pro on social media and let me know in the comments section down below what tutorial you guys would like to see next. Thank you so much for stopping by and I'll catch you in the next one.